Hello and welcome to another week in our garden. Now it's a beautiful sunny day. To think we had all that east wind that cut like a knife and now we've got beautiful sunshine and lovely clear skies. And actually yesterday the swallows arrived here so that's a good sign that spring must be on its way. Just show you a little bit of the progress we've done on the greenhouse site. This small building here sticking out this will actually be the tool room so all the guard equipment can go in there and be locked up nice and snug and safe we've managed to get the window in there's a little bit more mortaring to do around it just to tighten it up it is screwed in but we just need to let it set a little before we put the windows in now Gemma's invited us for Sunday lunch, which Philippa is actually going to cook for us, bless her. So we decided that being that we're going that way, and Gemma absolutely loves the rhubarb, so we thought we'd pull a little bit of rhubarb and we'll keep it in the fridge until we go on Sunday. But if we pick it with you, you'll be seeing what we're up to then. Now the rhubarb, hasn't grown as much as it should have done because we've had no rain for oh three over three weeks now so it's very very dry i've actually put the sprinklers on this morning on the strawberry patch just to bring them on now there is plenty of moisture deep down but because the strawberries are very shallow rooted they really are drying out so they was beginning to flop a little so we've put the sprinklers on this morning just to give them a, a good soaking i'll give them a good soaking it's no good give them a little bit and they'll be fine let's pull some rhubarb now as you can see it hasn't grown as much as i'd like but there's enough in there for for us to take a boiling out for jam i'm sure let's have a look yes. remember it's follow it down and give it a give it a tug that's good you won't get it too red this time of year because well not here anyway because obviously we haven't had the sun but that's a that's a good piece we'll just get her a few okay. anyway that one's a bit redder than sort we want While you're pulling your rhubarb, remember to keep your eye out for flower stalks that are coming up, especially on ancient varieties like this. If you see a flower stalk coming up, take those off as soon as you can. They will be a bit sour, so don't try eating them. There you are, look, there's a flower stalk coming up. If you open that, you'll find the flower in it there, look. Don't really want those. And don't try and eat them because they will be sour. They'll go on the compost, eat good for compost. Ooh, that one's red. That's a nice one. Here we are then. Nice piece of rhubarb there. What I do is I come back from there about an inch and then cut off, okay? Like that. Don't cut yourself like I do. There you are, that's a, a nice little boiling of rhubarb for us to take to Gemma. She'll enjoy that. Now I shall leave the rest for a day or so. Hopefully we might get some rain. We look at the sky, we're not, but hopefully we might get some rain. It'll bring it on a lot quicker then. But this rhubarb we can harvest till July, so we're all right. We've actually still got some in the freezer we're using up, so. We're not quite ready for it yet, but Gemma will love that. We'll have a walk up the garden now and I'll show you the progress of the paths. 
we'll look at the where the parsnips are I don't think they're up yet now this is the frame that we use for the pumpkins and squashes if you remember last year it was right up on bed A it has now come down to bed D it will go just here and we'll have a path down the centre of it so it would be easier to tend the plants inside instead of getting wet feet all the time okay now we'll have a look at the parsnip seed I can see it's not up but we'll have a look anyway as you can see nothing yet I've actually took the sacks off the soil now and put it on top of the frame to keep them a bit cooler now I'm just popping this little piece of essien over the top of the parsnip stop this strong sun from drying them out too fast at this. now I put a cover on the big tunnel that we're going to put the Brussels sprouts in and that's all my tunnels now covered we need to get them planted up now there's another one I've started now so we'll finish this one for this week now I came down this morning and planted this one up before it got just too hot obviously I've given them a good drink in this end there's calibrese and lettuce and in this end there's greyhound cabbage that we should grow pretty, pretty fast and lettuce as well now this tunnel I came when I was planting this this morning I left this one so we can finish it together I should be planting some cabbage sherwood in this end only about nine or ten and they're those lovely summer cabbages that make the good cold slaw in this end I'm planting some red cabbage these would be smaller so I can put four in a row instead of three we don't want the red cabbage too big in the center i put half a dozen kohlrabi now the main kohlrabi we had in the frame hardly not but because we had the east wind and i'm sure the temperature in the frame dropped below 10 that means any kohlrabi that was growing will just blow straight through and go to seed but so I kept six anyway the rest of them I gave to the chicken so I put those six in there I will reset some more seed but I'm sure these will run straight to seed but we'll see there's only six so we'll see how they do I'm using the bulb planter again it's getting a lot of work this year this is we'll put four in a row just across there plant them in give them a good water and then put the tunnel back down now this old ground is very stony now I'm always complaining about the clay and the amount of rubble and bricks that they keep finding in the garden and Murray my neighbor showed me a map last week it was dated 1824 and where we're standing now was actually a brick kiln so now we know where all the brick rubble and all the stone and all the clay well the clay was used for the bricks so now that's why i think we're in a valley so a little bit of knowledge from what used to stand on the garden right so we'll use the ball planter again to push it in They're in liners and they're well watered so they'll just drop straight in. But like all the cabbages, put them in very firm. So just pop them in and then tighten around them and really press them in tight. Remember what I said last week, if you have cabbage root fly, put your collars on now. There you go, look, very wet. But they need to be, they need to be wet in this dry land. We'll pop the label in there's the it's cabbage red autumn so we'll pop that in with them and then obviously with them being planted tight in this one we won't be able to put lettuce in 
just in the goat and then really firm it in last one then and then we'll pop those Sherwood cabbage in in we go nice and tight now that's the red cabbages in we'll just put those uh, Sherwood in in the other side there's only three to put in along here very dry these have had a good watering look but they've been stood in the sun and have dried out again same as last time I'm going to take the top of these collars off and just pinch the bottom out okay so because these are Sherwood they make quite big cabbages they're quite a big cabbage but they're only a small tight head they're very good these will have to be watered in there The ground's showing damp quite deep down with the planter, but it's certainly drying out. They're rooted through quite well. So what we'll do, we'll just pinch that bottom. One there and the spare. In case one goes, then we'll move that one in. I don't think the cold rabbi will be there for long. I'm sure it will go to seed. If not, it'll it'll be gone soon anyway. You only want them about as big as a tennis ball maximum for when you eat them. And there we are. Me straight, nice and tight. Right, we'll just pop the spare one in, just fill it up a little bit, don't want it too deep. That is hard ground. There's about 10 cabbages left, but of a friend of mine who will take those. Now what I will do, is when I've really given this a good soaking of water and broke the soil down a little bit, I'm going to put, especially in this, in this half of this tunnel, I'm going to put a couple of rows of radishes because they'll be up and gone before these cabbages close the gap. So we'll catch crop, that's what we call a catch crop, we'll catch crop some radish as well. Just while I nip up now and get a can of water and then we'll shut the tunnel down. Plenty of water on them. Ready to soak them in. And so I have watered the others in well, it's just these few that we've done. Now we have another little tunnel set. We've done three, we've just got three more, but remember this year I'm actually going to put the leaks in one of these tunnels because we had trouble with the leak moth last year. That large one is all for Brussels, so there'll only be two more to plant up and we've definitely got the plants up there. I'll show you in a moment because we're just off to the greenhouse now. Now as you can see I've got the sprinkler on on the strawberry bed they're looking better already they was beginning to go down a bit flat in this hot weather but with them being shallow rooted they was drying out too much so we'll give them a really good soak and then we'll let them get on with it then the other thing that we must do next week is put the net on this frame I've noticed the birds are in there pecking the buds especially on the current so we'll 
another little job we'll do next week is put this cover on. Right, we're up at the greenhouse and it's absolutely boiling in here. But we're going to pot the remainder of the geraniums that we've overwintered. Now, if you can see the shelf, that is mainly the fuchsias that have been potted. Some look a bit sad, but they'll soon pick up. These are the last pot of the geraniums, just to show you how we do it. And the compost I use is good quality potting compost. And I've mixed some perlite in it and a little bit of leaf mould. About a bucket of each into the mix. But the perlite is two or three hands full just to, just to lighten it a little bit. Geraniums don't want to be too heavy on the feet. This is our overwinters in the shed. So just pulled them out. Just pulled them out. Now can you see how dry that is? That's how it's overwintered, as dry as that. Now these, we need to cut off. I haven't got second ears. And that won't cut it. These here, we'll just break those off, look. They're dried out. There you go. Leave this one. If we had my second ears, I'd probably cut that off, but it's not important. And then into one litre pot. I usually do this in the shed, but I brought these up so I could show you how they're doing. So you'll have to bear with me while I pop them in this in the bucket. And there you are, that's what we do. I'll do some more. Again, look, that's how it's overwintered, dry. Perfectly all right. And if you give them a good drink, give them a good drink and let them sit in the sun for a bit and they'll soon be away. There you go. I'll do one more with you and then I'll finish the tray. Just pull them out because you can see how many we put in there. Look, there's loads. So I'll get them all done. If they come out like this, that's fine. Just pot it up. If those come off, they come off. If they don't, like that one won't, just leave it. That's, that's okay. And when they take off, they'll make quite nice plants, these ones. And some of them, some of them have been with us for quite a while. Let's find a big one, so I'll show you a big one. Here we are, look. That's how it's overwintered. And now we're going to pot it straight in. That won't come off, so we'll leave it. One litre pot's plenty. You will find the bigger ones when they've been in the compost for an hour or so that might just droop a little. So if you just put them into a, a tank or a, a lid with some water in, they're soon, they're soon tore it up again. But there you are, that compost might just draw them to dry a little. So if they look like they're drooping, put them in some water. Right, so I'll finish the rest and then I'll show you how many I've got out of this one pot. There you are, that's all the overwintered geraniums. They will all grow, grow along quite happily now. And they will make quite big plants by the time we come to put them out. Obviously some are flowering already, but we'll just let them flower then we know the colours. Now I should give them a good drink. I'll probably put a piece of fleece on the outside of the greenhouse just to stop the sun blazing through while they do have a drink. And then we're going to pot a cucumber and then I'm going to have a drink. Right, so we're going to pot one of the cucumbers up to get it going in this 
top and then we're going to put it against the wall over there we have brought the frame up but we can pop that frame on later when it cools down a little but I'll just show you what I do the box that we use has only got mesh on the bottom so what I do I just put some chopped barley straw on the bottom and with it being barley straw it just keeps the compost at the bottom nice and sweet as well okay just a handful you can put a piece of newspaper or something in the bottom or tissues anything but I think barley straw it just keeps it nice and sweet doesn't let it sour at the bottom compost good quality potting compost about two or three hands full of leaf mold in there as well and about a tablespoon full of chalk okay that's what we put in that you can just see the little white dots that's the chalk there's no real feed in it there's feed for what a couple of three weeks I would say but because I'm watering every day I'll be able to bring the feed to them rather than getting a too strong compost and then it might burn the roots so this way I can control the feeding and we just put it in the chalk I use is just blackboard chalk and I just grind it up and put it in I'll just press it down a little. I'm not going to top it all the way on because we can top up as we go. Right, ends cucumber. Now the leaves are a little bit damaged, that's where I've been covering up with the fleece every night. But once it gets there next to the frame, I'll be able to just droop the fleece over the frame if it's going to get gone. I just make a nice hole for her and in she goes I shall bring one of those little green sticks up from the bottom just just to give it a start and then as it starts to grow I should top the compost up can you see these white spots on the bottom of the stalk they will actually grow roots later on when we start and top the compost up. As you can see there's little cucumbers forming already so it is ready for getting in these pots. What I'm going to do is pot two into these pots. I've got other people who want the others and as soon as they start to get away I'm going to set some more seed so when they finished the other ones will be coming along so they'll be able to take over when we get to that stage towards the end of the summer when the plants are going down a little bit not producing the next batch will start producing so we'll extend the cucumber season likewise the tomatoes that'll be about it for this week and just to say that i wasn't here when this was a brick kiln in those days okay nearly but not quite now that'll be it for this week many many thanks for watching thank you for subscribing we do appreciate it and hopefully we'll see you next week and i hope you all have a good easter holiday enjoy yourselves not too many easter eggs busy week next week so see you next week. Take care of yourselves. Bye now.